The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, along with Signature and Silvergate Banks, has shaken the banking and tech sectors globally, setting off a panic not seen since the days of the financial crisis of 2008. Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank. Silicon Valley Bank. It's the largest bank meltdown since the Great Recession more than a decade ago. Experiencing a bank run, a stock price plunge, and a government-ordered takeover. Silicon Valley Bank was the go-to institution for venture capital firms, the majority of their clients being tech workers and VC-backed tech startups and businesses. Founded in 1983, SVB was the 16th largest bank in the United States and had approximately $209 billion in assets and $175 billion in deposits. On March 10, 2023, banking regulators shut down SVB after the bank suffered a sudden collapse, marking the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. How did the bank collapse and is this the start of another financial crisis? To understand how the Silicon Valley Bank collapsed, we need to get an idea of how a bank works. When you put your money in a bank, it doesn't remain locked away in the bank vault. Instead, the money you deposit is used by the bank to give out loans to other people and businesses and other investments, which gives the bank interest on the amount paid. Bank then pays you a lower interest for using your money. Bank keeps the difference between the higher interest it receives from its investments and the interest it pays its customers for depositing money in the bank. This is the primary source of revenue for every bank. Sometimes when fewer people and businesses are looking for loans or when the economic outlook is not so great, banks will buy government bonds to safeguard the money their customers deposited. In simple terms, a bond is just a receipt of a loan, where an investor lends money to the bond issuer for a set period of time in exchange for regular interest payments. Once the bond reaches maturity, the bond issuer returns the investor's money. Government-issued bonds are considered one of the safest types of investments. The interest rate of a bond, like any other loan, depends on the federal interest rate. It will be lower when the federal interest rate is low and will rise as the federal rate increases. Bonds are considered safe investments but what happens when you have a fixed-term government bond and you need to get your capital back for an emergency instead of waiting for it to mature? You'll have to sell the bond to someone or in the bond market, where the price of the bond may vary. Consider you invested $1,000 in a 10-year bond that will give 1% interest. If you kept this for the full 10 years, you'll earn $1,100 in total. So you want to sell this bond after two years of issue, but now newer 10-year bonds are issued at 3% interest due to a rise in federal interest rate. No one will buy your 1% rate bond for $1,000 when they can get a better return elsewhere. So if you want to sell, you'll be forced to sell your bond for a lower rate, say $950, to entice potential buyers. Similar situation is happening with all banks now. The 2020 pandemic created an unusually high demand in the tech sector. Many companies were growing faster and were more profitable than they have been in years. The low interest rates and excessive money printing from the US Federal Reserve caused venture capital funds to have a record high number of deals and investments during this time. The pandemic created a strange and amazing couple of years for most tech companies and startups. As mentioned earlier, the Silicon Valley Bank catered heavily to the tech industry, especially to tech startups and venture capital firms. So in 2020, when venture capitalists were investing lots of capital and startups were raising money at huge valuations, deposits surged at SVB from about $61 billion at the start of 2020 to $189 billion by the end of 2021. While SVP saw a massive influx of deposits, Lending activity was weak because of all the uncertainty in the economy related to the pandemic. SVB had more deposits than it knew what to do with but nowhere to deploy them. So the bank put a lot of the excess deposits it received in 2020 and 2021 into long-term bonds like US Treasury bills and mortgage-backed securities. These bonds are considered safe investments as they are guaranteed by the US government. But since SVB purchased these bonds when the interest rates were the lowest, it exposed SVB to a lot of risks if interest rates spiked because when interest rates rise, bond prices fall as we saw earlier. 
And this is exactly what happened in 2022. As the Fed started to rise interest rates in 2022 rapidly in response to record high inflation, the prices of bonds that SVB held started to fall, and the bank has been sitting on massive unrealized losses in its bond portfolio. This might not have been a problem. SVB would just wait for those bonds to mature and cash out without recognizing any real loss. But the uncertain macroeconomic environment due to interest rate hikes by the central banks, volatile markets and a decline in consumer spending pushed down the tech sector growth in 2022 and even forced many startups to fail. SVB's clients started withdrawing their money and deposit inflows slowed. The bank was forced to sell some of the bonds to raise cash in order to pay its clients' money withdrawals, and the unrealized loss started to become realized loss. Still, SVB had more than enough liquidity to cover a normal rate of withdrawals, and on March 8, the bank announced it had sold $21 billion of bonds from its portfolio at a loss of $1.8 billion and would raise more capital by selling shares worth $2.25 billion. The goal of this announcement was to project that the bank was being conservative and raising this money to stabilize itself. But the timing could not have been worse that it was almost comical, and the plan backfired. The same day, the crypto-focused Silvergate Bank announced that it would wind down and return all deposits following similar issues, as customers rushed to pull their deposits out of Silvergate following the FTX collapse. SVB's announcement spooked investors and customers alike. The share price plunged and customers rushed to move their money out of the bank while they could. In the United States, up to $250,000 of bank deposits are insured by the federal government. But, as the majority of the deposits came from tech firms and VC money, 97% of the deposits in SVB were above the FDIC threshold and fell under the uninsured category. On March 9, depositors pulled about $42 billion of deposits from the bank and the next day, regulators took over the control and shut it down, all these within just two days after their announcement. There are many factors leading to the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank, the blame mostly falls on the bank's chief officers and the board of directors for doing a very poor job with asset and liability management, and not adequately preparing for a situation in which interest rates would rise quickly and deposit outflows would accelerate. Their mismanagement becomes more alarming when considering the fact that the bank is tied closely to the tech and startup sectors. Unlike a typical bank, SVB had an undiversified customer base, with a huge percentage of uninsured deposits and a heavy reliance on a relatively small number of VCs and company founders. Most of their clients are classified as high-risk, while in the normal banking world, most high-risk businesses are offset by a large pool of low-risk businesses. Reports after the bank collapse show that the bank parted ways with its chief risk officer in April 2022 and appears to have operated without a full-time replacement until the year's end. This is when the bank severely needed a risk assessment. There were new regulations passed in the wake of the 2008 financial crisis. But Greg Becker SVB's CEO successfully lobbied to lift the threshold for these stricter regulations to $250 billion. If SVB was a bigger bank, it would have been subject to tougher regulations and stress testing that would likely have kept it from getting in such a big hole. Further, until the bank's failure, its CEO Greg Becker was a board member of the Federal Reserve Board of San Francisco, the primary regulator of SVB. Further reports reveal that Becker sold $3.6 million worth of shares in a prearranged sale, just days before the bank's collapse. Altogether, SVB executives and directors cashed out $84 million worth of stock over the past two years, out of which $29.5 million is by Becker. The bank also paid out bonuses to employees just hours before the FDIC takeover on Friday. All these rises more questions and have put the management under further criticism. The SVB Financial Group, the parent company of SVB, its CEO and CFO have been sued by shareholders over the bank's collapse. The Federal Reserve is also facing criticism for missing clear signs that Silicon Valley Bank was at high risk of collapsing into the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. Moreover, the Federal Reserve has a major share of the responsibility for current market conditions. The Fed kept rates near zero for far too long. They ignored inflation concerns until they were forced to change track in late 2021. At the same time, the market was flooded with trillions of dollars of liquidity, and that made deposit growth outstrip bank lending, forcing banks to place more capital in the perceived safety of medium and long-duration government bonds. 
Then 2022 saw the Fed hiking interest rates aggressively in an effort to tame high inflation and inadvertently blew a hole in the finances of Silicon Valley Bank and many of its peers. The hikes which moved from close to zero early last year to the current rate of more than 4.5% are supposed to slow down markets that depend a lot on borrowed money, like the residential and commercial property sectors, as well as bring down the rates of hiring and wage growth. But they also wreaked havoc on bank balance sheets because of the effect of interest rate hikes on the value of long-term bonds. At the end of 2022, U.S. banks were sitting on $620 billion in unrealized losses. Many are raising concerns that these government bonds could be the toxic asset that will cause the next financial crisis. Is this similar to the 2008 financial crisis? No. While in 2008 banks were holding super-speculated assets, which became worthless all of a sudden, SVB and other regional banks are holding much safer assets which will not have much effect if they can hold on to them till maturity. SVB's collapse has certainly affected the operations of many businesses all over the world. FDIC has agreed to guarantee all deposits, including deposits above $250,000, and this will certainly avoid a catastrophic impact on the economy. The $620 billion in unrealized losses show that the banking sector is definitely not in a stable position. Other regional banks have taken a hit, as many depositors are already moving their funds to bigger banks. The Federal Reserve Board has made funding available that will allow banks to obtain liquidity by putting up their bond holdings as collateral. The Fed will accept the bonds at face value, instead of the current lower market values. The goal is to help institutions to avert further catastrophic bank runs. Everyone is trying to evaluate the long-term effects, and the government is trying to reassure that the economy is still in good shape. What do you think about the whole situation? Who is to be blamed? And what will be the impact of Silicon Valley Bank's failure? <laughs>